So, welcome back to Third Age Reforged and to another battle replay, and this is going to be the first tournament battle that I'm going to be covering. There is an ongoing tournament at the moment based upon the test build for the new patch, and the way that this tournament works is there are 12 teams of two, so it's a 2v2 tournament rather than a 1v1, and the structure of it is going to be first battle is going to be a pitch, second battle is going to be a siege, and then it goes back to a pitch battle for the decider, and I think for the finals there is another siege and pitch appended onto the end of it as well, so it's a slightly longer series if you make it that far. It's going to be quite difficult to cover all of them of course, 12 teams of two and several battles each, it's it's going to be a bit of a, a bit all over the place in that regard, especially if I do end up going away for work again at the end of the month, which is fairly likely I think. So we're going to cover these battles when and where we can, and hopefully as well I'll be able to show through matchups to completion. And we will be starting off with one such matchup, so it's going to be Mevan who sent me this one, who is going to be playing alongside Mech Thorn. And then over on the other side of the field we have Batu and Alexios 22. So going to be an interesting one this. I think actually this does work out to have something of a theme to it, which of course in tournament battles is uh, by no means guaranteed. We have Rohan and Mirkwood on one side, and Canned and Rudal on the other, so two very different approaches to the team compositions here. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll be able to see the entirety of this matchup and we'll, like I said, it's unlikely we'll be able to do all of them and I'm not sure how dense I'm going to be able to make these tournament battles, but hopefully one will follow the other. Um, and the second battle in this series I also have as well, so the second siege. But we'll start off with the blue team, I suppose, on this occasion. Going to be playing as Canned Mevan, and he has got the Whatcher, which in an open field battle like this, the Whatcher really does make it quite difficult for the opponents to stand still and try and... It will force them to move around a little bit. The Whatcher is always going to be capable of dishing out damage. It's going to be spread across multiple units as well. It can be really uncomfortable, especially for a force like the Elves, admittedly, where every hit is going to be a real tragedy for them to have to try and deal with. Uh, this also is... An interesting kind of unit that they have now manning the crew, a two-handed Falksman. We'll see how well they can perform both at range and in melee. Of course, when it comes to skirmishing, the Candish forces do have quite a lot in their favour. Heavier archers, of course, they won't be able to dish out as much damage or have as much range as Mirkwood. Um, but they should be able to do a pretty good job of getting cost efficiency even against Mirkwood. You've got the Variag Bowmen with their bucklers, going to be good. At absorbing a little bit of extra damage. Just in behind we have blocks of Nurad Footmen and Nurad Halberds, the classic combination here. The armor-piercing element to this combination isn't really going to be super effective, a little bit more so against Rohan than against Mirkwood, but the really important thing here is going to be the big shields covering for the lack of shields for the Halberds and of course the Phalanxes, which interestingly enough when Rohan and Mirkwood team up they are the only two factions in the game, I believe, without access to a single Phalanx unit between them, so that is going to be a bit of a deficiency that the red team are going to have to work with, um, and it does mean that the Halberdiers will be guaranteed a range advantage in melee, so that'll be something that Mevan will be hoping to take good advantage of, more Nerad Footmen with those big wicker shields that are going to be utilised. The new unit for Canned as well, we have the Blood Trolls of Canned. They look kind of like Oni from uh, Japanese mythology, which is pretty interesting. They have these large wicked looking clubs and they will function I think pretty much like regular trolls. They're a little bit smaller in terms of the unit model in terms of how they look but you know they're going to be heavy hitting. You know there's only a few of them so if they do get isolated they can be picked off pretty quickly but it'll be interesting to see how they get on here. We have more Variag Bowmen guarding the flank, more blocks of infantry. Brotherhood of the Axe again the armor piercing. Not really the most important thing in this particular matchup but heavy base attack and good charge damage is always going to be useful for crushing in on some of the opposition infantry. We also have the Variag Warriors who are going to be a pretty good pick. I mean they will of course get out muscled by the likes of the Elves but there are a lot of them and two-handed swordsmen ultimately can be a good antidote for the extreme advantages Elves often have in terms of their stats. Variag Warriors and then over here on the flank we of course have a Candish Cavalry Force going to be clashing with Rohan as well so pretty much a classic two, well, the two horse archer factions in the game, really, in terms of how many they can field. Brotherhood of the Bow, interesting to see how they get on against maybe the slightly heftier 
Rohan Cavalry Brotherhood and Bow after all not having access to any sort of shields. It's certainly a out and out horse archer built for dealing damage but they will also be accompanied by the Nurag Windblades who are a very swift very dangerous unit of high-end melee cavalry. Well, bodyguard tier melee cavalry. But it's something that Rohan don't lack for either. An intriguing matchup for sure. His ally Thorn, playing as Rudau, are kind of similar in the sense that armor, even less so for Rudau really, is less of a concern. A little bit more savage in melee perhaps, Rudau, but still more numerous. Um, evil man factions tend to follow that uh, ethos. We have the Rudau clansmen. Again, good shield value on these guys, much like the Nurad Footman, so as much as I think the red team are going to have an archer advantage, certainly in terms of damage, um, they're doing their best to mitigate that advantage here, the blue team with their selections. Once again, Rudau Swordsman with some Pranodyne Pikemen in the mix as well, going to try and take advantage of the phalanxes that they do have available to them. Shielded Pikes as well should be good in a matchup like this. Of course, one thing Rudau certainly have going for them is their javelins, a few good volleys from them and the likes of the elves will be starting to struggle, you would imagine, but stuff like the Atenmore's troll hunters are likely to be focused down on the approach by those heavy-hitting archers and Rudawa's base defense, even though the Atenmore's troll hunters are a little bit more well-armored, but across the board, a faction like Mirkwood, you would imagine, is going to be uh, very difficult for Rudawa to go blow for blow with. They're going to have to employ their javelins to good effect. Rudawa marksmen, they're going to be doing their best to, at the very least, challenge the elves at long range, though, of course, they will struggle to win that fight outright. And just in behind, we have Witch Realm Enslavers, wielding their tridents now like halberds, of course. So again, another phalanx unit um, in many ways. 73 per unit there. More clansmen in the backfield. Quite a few cavalry units as well. Colfell Maidens, Javelin Cavalry. So they're going to be trying to, if there is Mirkwood Cavalry on the field, those javelins will soften them up. And then you have, of course, the hefty charges of the Franodine nobles to contend with as well. Their unique selling point really among knights is the fact that they have armor-piercing attacks in melee, which again, against Mirkwood, is not the most important thing, but it's still welcome nonetheless. Um, Rudow undoubtedly will have a few units hidden in these trees as well. Moving along to the other side of the field, we have Alexios's Mirkwood army. Of course, we saw them in the last battle do very well for themselves with their ranged units. On the open field, it's not quite so cut and dry. But stuff like the Elven King's Guard, again, armor piercing in general is not really the important thing um, for either of these two sides. Neither Kand nor Rudau really place too much stock in their armor either, but still, armor piercing attacks in melee. But the main attraction, of course, is going to be the heavy damage these Mirkwood archers are capable of doing at long range. Then, of course, we have the quality infantry core that Mirkwood are known for. Big shields on them, so if they do end up getting involved in a little bit of a back and forth with the particularly Kandish archers, um, their infantry is at least going to be well protected from the front. Of course, Mirkwood do lack a little bit in terms of armor, so that does mean that the shields are going to be playing a bigger and more important role. We've got a few units of armor upgraded here, Elan, so certainly in melee terms, this is going to be a pretty scary thing for both Rudar and Kand to have to deal with. But they can fall back, of course, on their phalanx units to try and mitigate the very strong offensive capabilities of these heavy elven swordsmen. The arm just gives them that little bit more staying power as well. Elder Royal Council are here also with their specialty projectiles and of course very strong in melee. Not very many of them of course but uh, that goes hand in hand with being really really high quality and of course the Elder Palace Guard as well. Good all-round unit and this is one of those situations where maybe their anti-cavalry bonus could come into play as well considering the open nature of this battle. Now then, moving on, there's also going to be definitely some hidden units from Mirkwood here and there. Moving on then to Batu, playing as Rohan. The Dwarven Catapult, so of course the Dwarves of the Glittering Caves going to be marching with the Rohirrim here today, so a bit of Dwarven infantry as well, as getting a catapult in for the, in for the deal as well. Going to be interesting to see the artillery duel. I think the Huacha will probably come out on top of that, unless the catapult can get to work really very, very quickly. But of course, even if the catapult does fall away, you want to be able to do some damage with it, but... The Dwarven Infantry does mean that it's not a total write-off if they end up losing the Artillery Duel. Sons of Yore, very, very strong unit of Lance Cavalry again. A little bit more well-rounded perhaps than the Franodine Nobles, though they do lack the armor-piercing attack. Plenty of backup as well. We've got the Lords of the Mark, which are more of a out-and-out infantry-killing unit. They have less capabilities against other cavalry, but in terms of sheer numbers Rohan are rolling with on horseback here, they will fancy their chances against any of the opposition cavalry, even Cand because they haven't brought quite so much. 
pay a rid of Oldberg, more of a baseline cavalry unit. This is one of the first um, examples that we're going to see of the new patch of massed cavalry. We'll see if this kind of unit is going to be capable of doing the business. Helms hammers, again, armor piercing attacks. The big shields are going to be useful considering all the projectiles that are going to be flying around. Again, Ridemark Axeman, it gives them that extra attacking bite in melee, but it's maybe going to be not quite so useful from the armor piercing point of view. As we've already mentioned, Westmark Infantry are going to be a good choice. Again, Rohan's infantry is good, but it's going to be relatively small in number considering the amount of cavalry they have here. So the phalanxes are going to be a problem. It may very well be that if Rohan can do the business with their cavalry, the infantry can then come in and finish the job. Westmark's here just in the front. And then we also have the Eastmark horse archers and the red shields of Urkenbrand. So lots of horse archers should be capable of winning the cavalry engagement with this much cavalry you would expect the red team but we shall see in fact we shall get this show on the road immediately i think and it's going to begin with an artillery duel although the dwarven catapult is immediately going to move and a bit of maneuvering around for rohan for the time being the watcher is going to be a fairly effective opener i think some good cover for rudauer to use on the approach to the elves here the trees going to make it difficult for Merkwood to really get a full handle on what Rudauer are advancing forward with. Canned, on the other hand, having to make do with the open terrain. I do worry a little bit for Rohan in this kind of situation, though. There is a large amount riding on their cavalry doing the work. Canned, under normal circumstances, of course, can bring pretty much the same level of cavalry as Rohan, but they have invested a little bit more into their infantry, which may very well end up being to their benefit. Brother of the Bow steadily moving forwards, trying to get a handle on what Merkwood may have hidden. Elder Palace Guard in behind the terrain now. Elven King's Guard in a good position to start shooting at Rudauer as they move forwards. Helms Hammers retreating as well. Just in general, the red team are pulling back slowly, and the blue team are moving forward slowly. Of course, this being a tournament, we can expect everyone to be a little bit more cautious. Thwatcher still pushing forward. I mean, once the Thwatcher is in range, the red team won't really have too much of a choice other than to start moving forward. I mean, there is cover in the backfield, both of these cliffs will block the rockets from hitting their intended targets. Watcher. Variag Bowman as well. Up on the flank, I mean, there's a lot of horse archers over here as well. I mean, you would imagine that a pitch battle like this, once the engagements do begin, things are going to resolve themselves really very, very quickly, given the nature Certainly of Mirkwood, one way or another, we'll find out what their fate is going to be fairly fast. We are moving up slowly alongside them. Catapults, some impressive range on the catapults there. I mean, I think going after these larger blocks of Candish infantry as they move forward, missing with those initial shots. But now the Watcher is going to start to open up, and I think with that volley, I'd be very surprised if all of those shots miss, miss the catapults and indeed one of them does get set ablaze. It's an interesting kind of fire effect isn't it? I think effects are turned up to maximum but we've still got effectively giant cubes as the uh, as the flaming particles there. They still have one catapult alive though. I would have thought that that volley would have finished the catapult off entirely so Rohan maybe with a little bit of respite there. Unfortunate maybe to not land a hit into those Candish infantry blocks as well. Also pushing up on the flank are the Rudar cavalry, although they are now moving back. Some forces breaking from the trees. And indeed, it is the Elder Pathfinders. I mean, in terms of a one-to-one -one engagement, Paranodine Nobles are strong, but they won't fancy their chances against the skill of the Pathfinders. But the support of the Coldfell Maidens is going to convince the Elves to pull back. A decent little ambush attempt there from Mirkwood in the trees, but not going to be able to make it stick unfortunately for them, although the Elven King's Guard are going to try and get a volley into the Coldfell Maidens, and as much as they are shielded and wear that chainmail, 
Uh, they do tend to melt away under arrow fire pretty quickly, and elven arrow fire in particular is going to be pretty deadly. You can see there that several of them falling in one volley. Good accuracy from the elves as well. Aaron of Aldberg thinking about moving forward. I mean, the Watcher doesn't want to overextend itself too far in front of its infantry support, otherwise that's exactly the sort of thing all of this Rohan cavalry will be very effective at. Thin lines of Westmark spearmen are actually pretty good against the Thwatcher as well. Undoubtedly hits would be landed, but actually scattering your units wider is maybe not such a good thing against the Thwatcher. It's one of the few examples of that being the case. Aaron of Alberg are going to be able to hit the Thwatcher, I think. The Thwatcher crew are going to have to dismount and sprint away from their post, and there isn't really any anti-cavalry that close by, but Rohan not committing to the charge. Ariag Bowman going to be able to take a few pot shots in response there. Archer crew look pretty mean as well. I mean, Falx's two-handed units in general are going to be pretty good in sustained melee against shock cavalry, but you'd imagine you could go in. I mean, the Elder Royal Council now firing away at the Watcher crew. I mean, they look deadly enough in melee as well, so this is a good move, and Medieval 2 artillery is not the fastest on its feet. Nurad's also taking hits, Rudar Marksman, so little bits of damage being done. The catapult now arcing its shot once more. And this time managing to score a glancing blow on the very Ag Bowman, so slow but sure damage being done to the Blues as they start to slowly advance forwards. Watcher could still prove to be the difference maker in the long run. The catapult, another arcing shot coming in, and that's a good hit there as well. Right into the centre mass of the Nurad footmen, a few Nurad halberds also in for the deal, and those phalanx units are the thing that the red team will have a real vested interest in getting rid of. If it comes down to small margins at the end, the extra range that this kind of unit offers you in melee can be a real problem. Another glancing blow only. So far the blue team won't be too worried about this. We are marksmen. They start to fire at the elves through the trees. Arrows making their way through the branches. I mean, Elder Royal Council taking some hits, but the Silver Thorns will now have their own response. Going after, I think it was the Atomor's Troll Hunters, but the infantry in front of them getting in the way. I think one of the pikes actually died. Forward comes the cavalry now, and the Elder Royal Council maybe caught out a little bit, but the Elven King's Huntsman, the standard unit of cavalry revealing itself. Another cavalry ambush in the trees, Ranadai Nobles going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Of course the Elder Pathfinders are the real concern here, the Elven King's Huntsman are a little bit fragile perhaps against the really high tier Ranadai Nobles, but the Pathfinders will respond in kind, so they have managed to preserve the lives of their elite tier archers, but at the cost of some more of their own cavalry, Coldfell Maidens. Not the best engagement for the elves, but again, another decent ambush attempt. If it were a slightly lesser unit of cavalry, we probably would have seen a better result. Watcher is going to go after the cavalry again. It is. They're far enough away. I mean, one lucky hit is all it takes. It did hit the catapult there, but it didn't set it alight. It managed to kill off one of the crewmen. Elven King's Huntsman moving across. Slightly raised terrain on the other side of the woods for Rudau there. Neither side is wanting to commit too much of their resources for the moment. And the, red, the red team, once they decide to commit their cavalry, that will really be the moment the battle is decided, I think. But the blue team also not too willing to commit to a full-blown infantry offensive just yet. Our marksman scurrying across. Still a small matter 
of these Silverthorn arrows to deal with, and once again we're going after the Javelins. I did mention how important it could be to help bridge that quality gap. If they do lose too many of their Javelins, it will come down entirely, really, to numbers and pole arms for Rudahor if they want to try and finish off those Elven infantry units, because Merc would have brought a good amount of infantry. Rohan, much more reliant on their cavalry. Forward come Brotherhood of the Bow, backed up by the Halberds nearby. But the Eastmark Horse Archers and the Red Shields, that is a lot of Horse Archers. And that will be enough to convince Cand to pull their own back. The infantry will remain in place though, those big shields will be really paying their dues now. And seeing that again, shuffling back some more units a little bit. Elven King's Huntsman now charging through the trees. A good opportunity perhaps to charge into the Rudar Marksman, but they do need to cycle out pretty quickly because there's the onrushing Rudar Clansman and the Marksman themselves, of course, a spearman in melee. So that was a swift charge, a good move that, and another charge coming forward from the Huntsman as well. Clattering into them once more, removing Rudauer's ability to compete at range entirely. Giving Merkwood carte blanche to target what they wish. Still the Silverthorns rip through the trees and Colfell Maidens and Ettenmore's Troll Hunters both are starting to fall and Rudauer are starting to take casualties across the board really. That would be a real blow for the blue team if ultimately Rudauer fell to Merkwood, because then Canned, as much as they do have a really solid infantry corps, they would have to deal with Merkwood infantry, what Rohan have, and then they've also got all of that Rohirrim cavalry buzzing around them, but there's still plenty left in this battle. Elven King's Huntsman, I mean, even against basic archers, they're not going to be great, unshielded and relatively lightly armoured as they are. So they are going to have to leave another arcing shot from the catapult. Just about managing to hit these Rudar clans, but again, not really devastating hits, but consistent damage being dealt. And that has been the order of the day, really. Aaron of Aldberg charging forward, the very odd bowmen. Are they going to be able to get in behind the... Kind of. The charge didn't really land. They pulled out right at the very last moment, the Aaron of Aldberg, but only one of the riders did fall. One of the officers, actually. Most unfortunate for him. Nurad's ever-reliable workhorse of the Candish infantry. Aaron of Oldberg pulling back once more. Still very tentative, of course, as many tournament battles tend to be. Committing at the wrong time can lead to disaster, after all. It's whether or not all of these little bits of damage the red team are doing are enough to make up for the fact that ultimately there's a lot more infantry on the blue team's side. So they can absorb these casualties a little bit more readily the other way around, but yeah, another nice hit. Centre mass of the Rudar Swordsman, Catapult starting to ratchet up a pretty impressive kill count for itself. What's going on over here? Brotherhood of the Bow fleeing, going forwards to try and harass the Rohirrim lines, but a single unit of Brotherhood of the Bow against the plethora of horse archers that Rohan have at their disposal. It was always going to end badly for them. Gonna do here the blue team Confell Maidens pushing forward, Elven King's Huntsman pulling back a little bit, the Elder Royal Council and once again force the Coldfell Maidens into retreat. I wonder how much ammunition the Coldfells sorry not the Coldfells, the uh, Royal Council actually have left, still taking counter skirmish fire from the battered and bruised Rudauer archers, so it's a testament to how many of them there were. Another ping. The King's Huntsman on the way across. Mirkwood Rangers. Another high damage archer unit which Mirkwood have really yet to commit to the fray. They have been pretty good about rationing their ammunition here which is not typical for a pitch battle but something we're more used to seeing in sieges but so far, so good. It's a very bright sun with the uh, rays just poking up over the cliffs. 
As soon as they do run a little bit low on infantry manpower, the blue team, you get the sense that will be the moment that the red team will want to commit all of those Rohirrim Lancers to try and scour them from the field, but Ariad Bowman on the way forwards. Mirkwood, maybe sensing now is the time. All of these Woodland Realm Axemen unveiling themselves. Mirkwood Rangers also going to start firing away in support of this newfound advance, and Rohan Cavalry as well, maybe seeing that Rudauer have taken a little bit more damage as they've tried to advance through the trees. I mean, that was maybe a little bit of an ill-advised frontal charge for the Aaron of Alberg into spears that were more than willing to take that fight, but this is going to be a little bit more interesting from Rudauer's perspective, how they deal with these Woodland Realm Axemen. Pretty well suited for facing off against basic Rudauer units and Aaron of Alberg now in and amongst things. Rear charge as well, that's going to be bad news. This is going to have to be the moment where the blue team start to do something a little bit more drastic, you think. If they can move across and make sure this assault ends in failure, it's the sort of thing which can turn the battle pretty heavily in their favour, but Hiri Lung also moving forward. There's still the small matter of yet more Silverthorn arrows. Fell Maidens, Elven King's Huntsman. They had wind blades on their way across. I mean, unshielded as well, so I think the Elven Arrows will be trying to dig into them if they can. The fact that a lot of the Rohirrim cavalry has come over here, though, is also a sign that maybe Can should be looking to make something happen as well. Brotherhood of the Bow shooting into the side of the Wooden Realm Axemen, and they are going to be pretty vulnerable to this sort of thing. Again, it's not a full-blooded commitment by either side here. It's incremental gains, trying to be as efficient as they possibly can. More engagements on the flank, driven by cavalry primarily, but that's the kind of battle that the red team will enjoy. Colfell Maidens starting to get overrun. The Aaron of Aldberg and the Elven King's Huntsmen, the regular Lancers, have both performed pretty well so far, so it's a good sign for the balance of cavalry in this new version. Riak, there is a fleeing Rudal marksman. Rohan starting to shift their infantry across. I mean, Kand are getting a lot of map position now, but the horse archers are going to make life a little bit difficult for them if, when it comes to trying to wrap around and deal with the Rohirrim reinforcements. Very Ag Bowman on the high ground, but this really is going to swing depending on how Rudal can perform in these woods. If they can do quite well, it means that Cand having a lot in reserve should make life very hard for the red team in the long run. But if Rudal fold, Cand have put themselves with their backs to the wall, really. Pikes are now on the way forwards. The archer support from the Brotherhood of the Bow has had the impact that they would have hoped for with the Realm Axeman. Victory seems certain for the Franodyne Pikes as they arrive. Over on this flank, meanwhile, all of the cavalry, Colfell Maidens moving forward once again. The Nurad Windblades are here, but there's only so many of them, and Lords of the Mark joining with the Aerod of Aldberg in terms of sheer numbers will be enough to bring the melee cavalry down. Huntsmen, Pathfinders as well. Still have more in reserve, Rudauer, but fighting as the Elven King's Guard charge downhill, the Sons of Yawl as well. Showcasing themselves on the front line. Victory seems certain for the Elven King's Guard. I mean, standard Rudauer swordsman, not the finest in terms of quality, but still not really a clear. Victor making themselves known for the moment. I think it's really going to come down to some clattering charges. Both units of bodyguard tier Rohan cavalry with an opportunity to charge into the Brotherhood of the Bow, getting there eventually. Just about charging into them. Obviously, a lot of this Candish cavalry is very quick after all. If you give them the chance to flee, they undoubtedly will. Another good charge from the Aero of Aldbergs. So far, this cavalry heavy build has not gone awry for Rohan. And 
They are starting to be more aggressive now. The Huntsman actually getting a good charge there. The Clansman too thin to really withstand it. And cavalry blasting right through the middle of the spears as they continue to try and chase the cavalry down. Rudara are struggling here. Cavalry all about their flank. And up front, the real heavy hitting elves are now joining the front line. And the pikes unable to maintain their cohesion. This is a real problem. Can they're going to need to do something here. More and more of the units are coming across. Rohan now joining in. And we'll be leaving it a bit too late. It's a good defensive position this for Rohan as well. They've got a cliff on one side so Cand can't envelop their smaller infantry force. They've got a bit of high ground. It gives them that screen that they need to continue picking away at the faltering Rudauer lines. But because of how many Rudauer soldiers there are, Merc would need to make sure that this momentum doesn't start to falter. It's a lot of high damage units there. Elven King's Guard and Hiri Lan. And in come the trolls now. Blood trolls have canned. I mean, it tends to be that units like this, the Hiri Lan, are pretty good at dealing with trolls, one of the better units at dealing with trolls, but there's a lot of units all around them. I mean, Troll Shrax are revealing themselves a real danger to the elves as well, so it's not too surprising. Alexios overextended a little bit to try and finish them off, but Kand are now moving forward with more reinforcements arriving for Rudauer. This could be the moment the blue team start to turn things back into their favour. Still the flanking motions continue. Oof, those throwing axes are ripping through those fairly light elven cavalrymen, but it's not enough to stop the charge from happening. We still seem certain for them. The Vranadine Rangers joining in as well. So this is where the slightly more fragile nature of the Elven Cavalry is going to make itself apparent, I think. But the Rudauer Infantry organisation is maybe more the problem here. If they were able to keep their pikes more compact. Might be a different story. Aero of Aldbo charging into the rear. Making the Nurad Halberts waver, but not rout. Which means they're going to have to flee again. Causing a lot of chaos here, the Rohan Cavalry and the Horse Archers. We'll be hoping to do the same. There's a lot going on now. Candish force assaulting the Rudauer hill positions, or Rohan hill positions, I should say, but a little bit of support from the elves in terms of quality. They're, again, leaning heavily on the halberds to try and see them through here. They do have another wave, but it's being harassed by the Rohan cav. More arrows flying all over the place. Horse archers need to just shoot what they can at this point and try and rack up as many casualties as possible. Arid of Aldberg. Not the best charge there, but it should be enough to rout this unit of Variag warriors, so... They've had the reinforcements to sustain these losses for quite a long period of time here, the Blues, but... With the cavalry now continuing to knock down infantry units and the quality, particularly of the elves when facing off against Rudauer, I think we've seen a bit of an issue, but Rudauer's having some success here. Frodrum Javelins continuing to do the business. It's still even. It's, it's still in the balance. I think, of course, because it's a tournament battle, as soon as it becomes an impossibility for one side to win, we're likely to see admissions of defeat, which is why we're getting close to the end of the battle. Still, things are in the balance. Hiri Lang struggling on the end of those pikes, and Witchrelm Enslavers alongside the Blood Trolls. I mean, the Palace Guard are a very tough customer, though. Exactly the kind of unit that the new Blood Trolls are probably going to start to fall away against. But the back of those Enslavers... Albadias, pokey pokey, we'll be able to keep them at bay a little bit longer. I think Rudan may have weathered the storm here, but it's again, it's still so close. I think because every single elven unit is is tough in melee hard, whereas many of Rudan's units, you know, of Rudan's army, there are only a few which would re reasonably go toe to toe with the higher end mainline units, and there's still sons of Yule, not many of them, but. Struggling, I mean, 
Though here in Frontline, the Westmarks are of good quality after all. Helms Hammers at the centre of things. Smart Horse Archers, along with the remaining Lords of the Mark. Routing may very well be Can's biggest nemesis here. Very tightly fought contest this, but all of this cavalry is still a problem. Rohan able to wrap around with their Ridder Marks. The loss of the Rudire General is a real problem. Morale is going to start to really falter. The Dwarves helping on the front line now. Always the benefit of, well, one of the benefits of these changes to artillery. The fact that many of them are now useful in melee. Speaking of which, the Thatcher crew is on their way, but there's not many of them left. The tanky Red Shields continue to pose a problem. The Cans flanking infantry force ultimately struggling. The Blood Trolls peeling away from the Palace Guard and trying to give them some sort of momentum when it comes to dealing with this Rohan front line, which considering the limited amount of infantry have done pretty well, I think this has been actually a very good showing from Rohan. It goes to show what their strengths really can be. Cavalry being front and centre and being the difference between victory and defeat, but a, a good enough quality infantry line that they can definitely do the job. Kanda perhaps more well-renowned for that balance than Rohan have been in the past, but this goes to show that they too can now perform in this regard. Yeah, Merkwood largely successful against Rudar are going to come over here with some of their very dangerous damage dealing units and finish off what remains of Can. So I think this is going to be a red victory here. There's still a lot of cavalry after all. And yeah, I think a lot of credit has to go to Batu for the, his use of cavalry here. Patience in the early game and then when the time came Utilising all of it all at once. Very, very nice. Merkwood as well. Really good use of their skirmishers. And ultimately, those are the two primary strengths of both of those two factions. And good use of said strengths, I think, has proven to be the difference here. More of an all-rounder approach from Kand and Rudauer. It wasn't enough to see them through here. The Blood Trolls. I mean, considering the kind of opposition they've been going up against as with most trolls. They've shown themselves to be pretty resilient, but the palace guard <laughs> finding them once more. Merkwood cavalry proving to be a little lightweight again, perhaps, but the ambushes were... early ambushes were okay. Nothing too spectacular, but as the game went on, they folded into the Rohan cavalry charges really quite nicely. Clattering through the ranks of what remains... The Red Shields of Urkenbrand. Very hard warriors, I think the only things left. I don't think the Candace General has fallen just yet, wherever he may be. But they rout, and that is going to be that. Good victory, that. It was in the balance for a long time, but then the blue team pushed over the edge. And I think worthy victors as well, the Reds. Very heartening to see all of that Rohan cavalry. In the previous version of the game, I don't think that would have worked. I think the Aerids and the Eastmark Horse Archers here simply would have been too lightweight and not damaging enough. Now, though, they did a good job. And there we have it. So, a victory for, well, I guess the. They've been calling them the Reds, but maybe Greens would have been more appropriate. Of course, Rohan and Merkwood, like I said, the only two factions in the game to not have access to Phalanx units, but not the be all and end all. And uh, that, I think, played out here. What could the blue team have done differently? I don't really know. I think Rudar getting caught in those forests and slowly picked apart by Merkwood skirmishers and then the initial infantry assault after that, when they had been softened up, was a bit of a problem. Um, and again, Rohan did a good job of also then supplementing that when they realised they had momentum. Canned maybe a little bit too slow to come to Rudar's aid or maybe attack Rohan. One of the two maybe would have made a bit of a difference, but... Uh, Obviously, we'll never know now. Um, and you can see the discrepancy between army sizes as well. I think the, the red team had to be cautious in the way they were, because if it went wrong, their armies would have fallen apart more quickly because of how small they were, whereas the blue team did have that little bit of extra leeway, so they were able to sustain those losses for a fairly decent period, uh, but ultimately not indefinitely, as we saw here. So well played to Alexios and Batu. We will see round two of this tournament encounter in the next video of these that we do, which will probably be in a week's time, another midweek 
game perhaps. I'll be trying to do as many of these as I can before getting sent away again, of course. Um, that will, of course, be a siege as well. Um, and there are a set number of siege maps which are allowed. So I know that Edoras is one. I know that Dolgaldor is one. Again, 2v2s. It'll be interesting to see how some of those bigger siege maps play out. Not so much Edoras. That's fairly well suited for a 2v2, but we'll see. We will see. And, of course, not every uh, battle is going to have maybe a good versus evil theme like this, as a tournament um, often does. But, um, yeah, we'll see what the next round of this one brings. Um, so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll join me for whatever is next.